Hey guys, just a heads up. I'm going to be at too many games next week with all of these people in Philadelphia, that area. So come hang out. There I am. Wow. These days, every console requires you to pay a fee if you want to play online with your friends. Unless you want to play one of those third-party free-to-play games. Games like Fortnite, Warzone, Warframe. Those don't require any additional fee if you want to play online. But... Games like Mario Kart, Modern Warfare, Street Fighter, those do require you to pay an additional fee if you wanna play online. This sort of subscription model isn't new at all. Well, it is kind of a little bit new to Nintendo, but it's, it's not a new thing. We've heard about it before. What is new is that now all of the consoles have like a premium tier that include a sometimes huge library of games. And these services usually have a few of the console's best stuff on there. It's honestly not a bad business model for most people, if it's done right. Just this week, PlayStation released their version of this sort of premium service called PlayStation Plus Premium. And it's actually kind of sick. A major upgrade from its previous PlayStation Now service. So, now that all three of the big console manufacturers have some sort of premium subscription service, I thought it was worth taking a deep dive into each one, ranking them all and see which one is the best one for you. I think this is for sure worth considering if you're torn between which console you wanna get because it could potentially mean you can get some of the best games or some of the games you're looking forward to the most, the games you're already gonna buy anyway, for way, way cheaper. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey man, hey, thanks for taking on this logo design job for me. Hey, of course, man, anytime. All right, well, let's see what you've got. Yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's a cat. You have to know that looks like. Yeah, I just didn't want to have to redo it. Just let me let me do it. Skillshare gives you the tools you need for the skills you need. Learn animal illustration and procreate with Rebecca Mills. You can even learn how to do this sort of double bob masking with William Buckley's class, Masking Essentials in Premiere Pro, which is literally what my editor used to do this right now. They have everything from animation, design, photo, film, writing, and so much more. The first 1,000 people who join me over on Skillshare will get a free 30-day trial, and you can try it for yourself. All right, well, I did it. Well, I like mine better. It's because you're an insane person. Maybe you just don't appreciate art. Maybe you appreciate it a little too much. Whoa! Psycho. Come on now. Some people don't want to pay a monthly subscription service to play games, and there's a few good reasons for that. Some people just don't buy a lot of games. Maybe. They buy one game every other month and that's enough for them. Some people only play Fortnite for like 100 hours a week. This service probably wouldn't be for them. Some people would rather have all of their games physically or rather own their games instead of having them as part of a subscription service. And that's completely understandable. Also, games could just leave the service at any time. So if you're excited for one particular game, maybe you play one game over and over again, it could just go away. But Usually they give you enough warning so you can like cancel your subscription service before that game leaves and you can just purchase it yourself. I know a lot of people would much rather just own the game so that this never happens to them. And that's completely understandable. But even after all that, I still think it's awesome to have a huge library of games for just a small monthly fee. I've been collecting games for a really long time but most people aren't like that. If you wanna have the same sort of games collection that I have, you're gonna to have to drop a fat stack. Instead, you could just pay like five to $15 for one month and you can get hundreds of games right there. Probably the worst of the three console online services is Nintendo Switch Online. But it's also the cheapest at just $20 for the base Nintendo Switch Online and $50 for Nintendo Switch Online plus the expansion pack. Now, just because it's the worst doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. It does get a lot of flack from fans and I did dump all over it when the expansion pack came out, but I honestly don't think it's that bad. I think it's a decent value 
for the great library of retro games that you end up getting. If you're not a retro game fan, then this is definitely not for you. The base service, which again is just $20 a year, lets you play games online and gives you over 100 NES and SNES games. It also enables cloud saves for most of your games, but this service kind of isn't that great. If you have multiple switches, there will frequently be save file conflicts. And there's a lot of games that just don't support cloud saves, which is very stupid. The expansion pack is $50 a year and adds a small library of N64 games, Sega Genesis games, and DLC for Nintendo's most popular games. It's safe to say, whenever a Nintendo first party game gets DLC, you'll probably get it included with your expansion pack subscription. The N64 games got a lot of flack for its poor emulation quality from fans and even myself. I'm also not too jazzed about the control configuration with the N64 games in Nintendo Switch Online. This was actually supposed to be a video all about different N64 controllers you can use that would fix my issues with the N64 games here. But then PlayStation had to go and drop their service, so I had to make a video on that. And I might still make a video on those N64 controllers if this video does well enough. So if you wanna see that, make sure you slap a like for the algorithm. But even with those flaws, these games are solid enough that having them on the Switch in this convenient way kind of cancels out the extreme minor flaws in emulation quality. Most of the issues with the Nintendo Switch Online is that Nintendo games just have really bad online infrastructure. Playing Nintendo games online is not a fun experience. Even just adding friends to a game can be a confusing chore and the lag is abysmal. They've since created a new sort of net code that some newer Nintendo games have used, but Super Mario Strikers seems to suffer the same horrible lag that Smash Brothers and Mario Maker do. It's such a huge problem that it ruins Nintendo's reputation among fans when it comes to online functionality, at least. So if we're gonna put all of these in a tier list, I'd say that Nintendo Switch Online plus the expansion pack gets like a C minus. I still think it's worth it because of the library of great retro games that you get and the DLC that you get for the newer games. You're gonna get the Mario Kart 8 DLC as it comes out with the expansion pack. But I just think the general online experience has to change. At least the price is pretty good though. Now we'll talk about what Xbox has to offer. This has been my favorite online service so far, but it's largely gone uncontested until just this week, now that PlayStation has their own Game Pass-like service. Xbox also has two tiers. There's Xbox Live Gold, which is required to play certain games online, and then there's Game Pass, which is gonna be their big library of games. They seem to be phasing out Xbox Live Gold in favor of the ultimate subscription, which is Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass rolled into one. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can get their online service and there's all different tiers and it's pretty confusing, but let's just say it's $180 a year for the whole shebang because that's just the easiest way to do it. Also, I might leave out some features. I'm gonna tell you the most important ones and the ones that you should care about the most, but if, if you wanna learn more, if you're interested in any of these, just go to their website and look at the other features that they have. And it could be updated by the time you watch this video. One of the most underrated features with Xbox Live has been their Games with Gold, which is about four free games every month. Well, games that are included with the subscription. Over on our podcast, we always talk about the free games you can get included with your subscription services every month because we think people are just missing out on those. You can just download all of the, you can have a huge library of games. Will downloads every single one every month and now his library is gigantic. But lately these games that you get included with Xbox Live Gold have been pretty underwhelming. I think that they're phasing it out in favor of just adding games to Game Pass. It's hard to find just how many games are available on Game Pass, but it looks like around 400 games from original Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and PC. And you can play these games across your Xbox One Series X and PC, and you can play them via cloud across these consoles. And then also Android, iOS kinda, Steam Deck, if you try hard enough, and soon to be smart TVs. One of the best parts of Game Pass is the flexibility. And the cloud gaming is fantastic. I'd never wanna play like a competitive shooter in this way. That's kinda when you start to notice the input lag. 
but for single player and narrative games, it's fantastic. And Xbox's instant on and cloud saves makes it super easy to just pick up the game right where you left off on any of the supported consoles. I've carried over my Halo and Forza saves between consoles with ease. Microsoft also has been very good about optimizing older titles for the new hardware. For example, Sonic Generations now runs at a full 4K 60 frames per second. There's a pretty big list of older games that have been optimized for the newer hardware. Another killer feature is that every Xbox first party title will be available day one on Game Pass. And a lot of third party titles are also supported. That means Halo, Starfield, whenever the hell that comes out, Redfall, but a ton of third party stuff too. Today, the day this video comes out, the new Ninja Turtles game is out and available on Game Pass. And you don't even need an Xbox to play these games. You can play them via the cloud on your phone if you really wanted to, or a web browser on any computer, or you can just play them on PC. The user experience with Game Pass is unmatched. Now, not all of the 400 plus games are supported on all of the different consoles. There are some games that are on Game Pass on PC, and there's some games that are on Game Pass on console only. But for the most part, you know, like the big stuff, like Halo, you can play that wherever the hell you want. So if I had to throw this in a tier list, I would say that the Xbox Ultimate subscription is like an A tier. I still think there's room for improvement, but it's a fantastic service. I wish it was just a little cheaper. You really get the first month for like a dollar. So instead of $180 for a year, it's really like $166. Also, the confusing structure of which you, you buy the service, you can't actually get a year, you have to pay for it monthly, which is also very annoying. But the user experience and the flexibility I wish you can play these games and the library of good games and the fact that all the first party stuff is day one on Game Pass, that's fantastic. That's A tier for sure. PlayStation's new service kind of gives Xbox a run for their money. PlayStation also has a baseline tier called PlayStation Plus that allows you to play games online with your friends and also has free games or games that are included with that service every month that have also been pretty lackluster. But their new service now is called PlayStation Plus Premium that also has different tiers, but it's a little easier to follow along. I feel like most people would be just cool with the extra plan, which is $100 for the year. That's very cheap. And it just gives you a pretty substantial library of PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games. But the premium subscription is just $120 a year. And that adds cloud gaming and also a library of legacy games, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Portable games. That's significantly cheaper than Game Pass Ultimate. But there's a few caveats. You can play these games on PC, but it's only cloud streaming. There is cloud storage, but it's capped at 100 gigabytes, which is honestly more than enough for any cloud saves you might have. All right, I'll go ahead and say the emulation is pretty bad. <laughs> this was the first random PS2 game I picked. I wonder what it's gonna be like if I, if I grab anything else. I'm a little disappointed though that comparatively there really aren't that many legacy games on here. There's not a big library of PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, or PSP games. Where are the rest of the classic games? There are a whole f ton of PlayStation 3 games though. PlayStation 3 games are only available via cloud streaming because PlayStation 3 emulation is a bit hard to achieve. Although some people would argue that it's not that hard and Sony just doesn't want to put the money into figuring out how to do it just yet. Again, it's kind of hard to nail down just how many games are available on PlayStation Plus Premium, but before launch, Sony said that there were gonna be over 700 games on there. Now I didn't count every single one because I'm not counting the 700, that sounds like a waste of my time, but it does look like a whole heck of a lot of games. And similar to Game Pass, there are some huge titles on there. First party games like Death Stranding, God of War, Returnal, and even third parties like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which are not on Game Pass. Cloud gaming is also just as good as Game Pass. My only real issues are with the UI. How do I get to the place? Oh, here we go. It's kind of hard to navigate. 
Otherwise, it's really hard to beat the massive library, except that Sony has not committed to day one first party releases. So games like the new God of War or the new Last of Us Part One remake, they might not end up on PlayStation Plus Premium for a while after they launch, which is one of the biggest selling points of Game Pass. I don't want those games coming to PlayStation Plus Premium when they're already in the bargain bin of a Best Buy. You know what I mean? Also, the Legacy Collection isn't optimized for the newer hardware in the same way that Xbox's retro games are. I think PlayStation Plus Premium wins a lot of points with me for its massive library of AAA games and also that it's significantly cheaper than Game Pass Ultimate. If we're putting it in the tier list, it's gonna go in A tier, but it's gonna go right above Game Pass Ultimate. I really hope that this sort of competition forces Microsoft to lower the price of their service. Now, I still love Game Pass and I still love my Xbox. I'm still gonna opt to play most of the third party AAA stuff on my Xbox through Game Pass just because of the ease of use and stuff. But there's no denying that the price point and the huge library of games is a little bit better on this guy. If Microsoft lowers the price of their service to match PlayStations, then these two might end up swapping places. Having first party games release day one on Game Pass is a huge deal. Overall though, I ended up liking PlayStation service a lot more than I thought I would. So what do you guys think? Which one are you gonna go with? Have you been deciding on one of these consoles and the service has been the deciding factor of either of these? Are you gonna cancel one of your subscriptions? Are you gonna get this new PlayStation Premium service? Did I leave anything out that is a big deal on any of these services? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey, you like this shirt I'm wearing? Well, you can get yourself one over at wolfdenapparel.com. Wow. 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 Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below. We got streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. That's also where the Wolfden podcast is if you want to come hang out and talk to us live. But of course, the most important things that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here so you know when new videos come out. Turn on notifications, but only if you're gonna watch every single video that comes out. Don't ruin my notification click through. And share this video with a friend, a friend who needs to know about these subscription services. Maybe they're thinking again one of these consoles. They're gonna need a subscription service at some point. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.